so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, praise Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Amen. That's good. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood just in simple faith to plunge me beneath the healing cleansing flood hey! Jesus how I trust him through him more and more thank God Jesus, Jesus precious Jesus oh for pray to trust him more Amen on the third, ready, everybody. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus. Just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest, joy and How I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, go for grace to trust him more. Amen. On the lights. Everybody together now ready? I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me. Till the end, thank God. Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for great, trust him more. Thank you. You can be seated. God bless you. That's good singing tonight. Great old song. We still got a lot of folks coming this evening. Let's uh, get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. We've got a whole lot of folks that need prayer tonight, people that need help, Lord and mercy, marriage, troubles, burdens, sickness, uh, that whatever it is, is about running through our whole family now. Marty had it Friday. Uh, Frankie had it Sunday. Kelly got it Monday. And I've been running back and forth in between them all. Trinity got it yesterday. And Ethan got it today and Miss B. They're both in the bed. So that leaves me. And I'm telling you, I'm feeling weird. I ain't kidding you, so pray for me. I think I'll be all right. I got to drive to Virginia tomorrow. But I, you know, so you wonder, is this my imagination? You think, oh, no, I'm getting sick. <laughs> I've been sick in a long time. But pray for me, please. I, that, I, I got too much to do. <laughs> Maybe the Lord will have mercy on me. But if not, we'll do it anyway, by the help of God. Let's uh, get ready. The kids are going to really start working on their, uh, their uh, play tonight. And uh, we're going to get some things done. I'm going to need some help with the, the big play. Need some other people. We're going to need a little a little prop work done. Any of you guys that are good, you know, with your hands, to make a little make a little curtain sort of a thing, something like that, let me know. Uh, we're going to have, have a little prop. You can't hardly stretch the curtain all the way across here. Sags down about here in the middle. Uh, but uh, we do want to have some props in here. Uh, for our Christmas play, we're really looking forward to it, and the kids are going to be practicing tonight, so it's going to be good. Uh, I hadn't wrote a play in a long time, but I wrote this one, and uh, I believe it'll be a, a blessing to everybody, okay? All right, we're going to go ahead and pray. Let's do pray for those that are sick, not able to, to be here, people having trouble everywhere you look. I mean, it's just one mess right after another. Uh, one man said, if you think everything's going right, you've obviously overlooked some because everything ain't going right. Uh, some, but not everything. So let's pray tonight. Let's pray God's will will be done. Uh, and do pray for me. I've got a hard weekend coming up, y'all. Uh, seriously, I need, I need that. So uh, 
If you want to pray about something tonight, let me know. I'm going to All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, God, for your goodness and grace and mercy upon our lives. We pray this evening that you would forgive us of all of our sin. Everything we've said or done wrong, forgive us, Lord, right now and wash us in the blood of Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, right now that you bless every single person here tonight. God, do what ought to be done in every life. Touch those that are sick. I do pray for Ethan and Miss B and uh, Catherine. God, that you touch her and others. Have your way, Lord. God, tonight, Lord, bless this service. Lord, those that are sin sick, lost without you. Heavenly Father, I pray you'd help them. God, do what ought to be done here tonight, Lord. Bless this service. Open our eyes and ears and hearts to the word of God. And Lord, send us away from here blessed and encouraged. We'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to do a little bit different this, this evening, and then we're going to receive our offering. Kids will be going to class. I know we've got other people coming. Got that song ready, Olin? Come on. Hey, Amen. He's going to sing one for us right quick. I appreciate Olin. He's been singing since he's just a little boy, and he ain't no little boy no more. Football player. So uh, uh, here he is, Olin Tebow, <laughs> the Christian gospel football player. Make sure he's on, y'all. Can you hear me? Nope. Hello? Amen, Lord. Now, don't forget, now, next week, we're going to have a special Thanksgiving service, so don't miss it. Don't miss next Wednesday night. It's going to be really good. We're going to have some testimonies from unusual places where we don't normally hear them, so don't miss next Wednesday night. Go ahead. Sometimes I sit and think about the wrongs I've done So many I can't begin to tell Hurt the pain that I have caused. I truly deserve to be in hell. I fell as low as one could surely fall. I did everything I could to hurt your name. I've caused many tears to fall down from your eyes. But Jesus, you love me still the same. Jesus, how could you have loved me so? When in sin I sank so very low I did every wrong I could And nothing that I should Jesus, how could you have loved me so Criticize, I murmured and complained I've lied, I cheated and deceived I've broken every one of your great laws and many times your spirit I have grieved. That's why I can't understand why holy God as you would ever take the time to hear a prayer from me. But yet you took the time to complete salvation's plan. So forever in heaven I may be. Jesus, how could you have loved me so? When in 
sin a saint so very low. I did every wrong I could, and nothing that I should. Jesus, how could you have loved me so? Man, that's good, brother. Appreciate that, Olin. Amen. All right. We're going to have just a little time of fellowship. Kids will be dismissed to the class, and then we'll take up our offering and get right into our study. Got a got a, a very, very important study tonight, so stay in here. Don't miss it, and uh, we'll, we'll get going here. All right? Let's all stand. Turn around. Everybody be friendly to everybody. else stand for the offering tonight. Everybody else remain standing for the offering. Kids, you're going to go back and work on the Christmas play tonight. Let's all uh, remain standing. Hope you'll give uh, tonight. Honor the Lord and he'll bless you for it tonight. <laughs> Let's get this done right quick. Amen. Amen. Let's all give tonight. If you didn't get your offering in Sunday, you'll, of course, you'll, you'll want to do that tonight. Big mistake get behind on your giving. Keep it, keep it current. Just like you, you know, pay your light bill, your house payment or whatever. Keep it current. God will bless you for it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Lord, we love you for what you've done for us tonight. Lord, we do pray now that you bless this offering this, this evening. Bless every single person here tonight. There's not a person here tonight don't have some kind of need, physical, spiritual, financial, 
uh, maybe, I, I don't know, whatever it might be, meet that need we pray. Do what ought to be done here this evening. Touch this service. Give us that we need to have in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I finished mine too. New Testament three times, Old Testament once. Finished it a couple weeks ago. Getting ready to start again. Winter camp's looking really, really good, y'all. Really, really good. Uh, we're excited about it. Looking for a great time. Hope everybody's planning on going. The good part about it, it's free. Uh, we got some kids from other churches wanting to come, and we're really looking forward to a great time in the Lord. All right, um, uh, let's see here. I want to, I want to, I do something tonight. I told you that I was going to bring some lessons on some really controversial subjects, and I feel like what I'm going to do tonight is is very needful in a church uh, like ours or any church today. Um, I, I just have one fear about this and one worry. And that is that somebody here will, will take me wrong. And I really ask you, please don't do that. Uh, uh, try, to, try to receive this in the, in the spirit that I'm, I'm going to try to deliver it in tonight. Because I'm going to talk about um, uh, the, the, the weird direction that churches are going in in our generation. I ain't talking about just a few big ones. I'm not about it's everywhere. Now you need to study the Word of God. Uh, rightly divide the Word of Truth, what the Bible says. Uh, study to show thyself approved unto God. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth, and we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. So I'm going to need you to hold your Bible in your lap because I am going to say some things. You're going to think that I'm being maybe mean or critical. I'm going to let you hear a preacher. Um, I'm a modern day preacher here for a little bit tonight. And we're going to go through this and sort of critique this according to the word of God. Now I'm telling you, I am not doing this to be critical of this man. I don't even know who he is. And I'm glad I don't. I wouldn't know him if he walked in the door. I don't know what the name of the church is. He pastors. I know it's not in North Carolina. And that's just perfect. That's right. Cause I, I have no ill will. I'm not jealous of him. Uh, I, I, the only way I can get y'all to see the, the truth is put error beside it. Now, if you, don't, if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you will wind up preaching a, a half gospel or maybe even a, a false gospel. And I'm not trying to belittle, to judge uh, this man. I'm not judging his sincerity. I'm not judging his salvation. He's a young man and... Uh, he, he's got a hold of what he thinks is a great truth. And basically, this is a sermon I told you about. It's titled, You're Not Trash. I'm Not Trash. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you hear a few little excerpts, and then we're going to look at some scripture. Okay? All right, Andy, make sure I got volume. Towards you in an amazing way. Amen? Are you with me? Yeah. Cool. So let's go there. So... Now, okay. any time, did y'all pick up on that tone? That's all you hear on TV anymore or on, on, on FM radio. You can get real preaching. 
I, I don't say you have to have a Yankee accent or be educated to be a preacher. I didn't say that. If you think that I'm being critical of this guy, you're listening to the devil. Because I'm not. I wouldn't know the guy if he walked in the door. I'm just trying. Can you pick up on that? It's like, yeah, we're all, we're all here today and we're all cool. And this is going to be cool today. Just listen a little bit more. This is what I want you to do. I want you to raise your hand if you are a sinner. All right. Put your hands down. Tight. Closed. Raise your hand if you are a child of God. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Put your hands down. All right. Open up your eyes. And that's what I expected. And that's what we saw in the first service. Okay. Yes. All right. Now stop right here just a second. So far, so good. Uh, if you raise your hand, you're a sinner. Everybody raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're a child of God. Everybody raise your hand. And now he is going to proceed for 40 minutes to convince you that's not the way you should think. That you should only see yourself as a child of God and not a, quote, present tense sinner. Now, if you don't get nothing else I say tonight, remember this. Remember this. I've been doing this for 40-something years, y'all. You don't identify a crook preacher, and I'm not saying he's a crook, but you know, the wrong kind, by what he says. 90% of what he says is right. You identify a fake preacher by what he will not say. He will not say hell. He will not say eternal punishment. He will not say you're eternally secure. He will not uh, say anything about the great white throne judgment and God's judgment on sin. That's the way you identify a fake preacher. It's all stuff like this. Let's listen just a little more. A lot of times, whether you were raised in church or whatever your upbringing is or your understanding of God or who he is or how he feels towards you. Does that sound like what you hear on the radio? Yes, it sure does. If we're not careful, even if we have received Christ and we believe in the finished work of the cross, if we're not careful, we hold on to an old identity. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. The old identity is you're just an old sinner saved by grace. And he said, if you're not careful, you'll hold on to that. An old identity. That something's going to come alive on the inside and we're going to realize, wait a minute, that's not who I am. That's not who I am. Amen? So listen to this. How many of you, you've heard the phrase sinner saved by grace? Wave at me. Sinner saved by grace. Okay, this is another one that's really important. This is another one that's really important. That should only be true of you for five seconds. Do you hear me? The moment you open your heart and receive Jesus and you put your faith in him and you believe what he's done for you and you believe that he raised from the dead, it is out of darkness and into marvelous lights. You are a new creation. The old is gone. The new, new creature come. Amen? Amen? We have got to get out of that mentality that, oh, well, I'm just, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Huh? All right, now can anybody see what he's done, where, he's, where his error is? What he's saying is right. We do come out of darkness into light. We do become a child of God. We do. But what he's saying is it's an either or. You ain't a sinner saved by grace no more. You're a child of God. You want me to tell you what right Bible doctrine is? I am a child of God. I am out of darkness in the light. I am resurrected in the Lord Jesus Christ. I do. I'm a joint heir with Christ. But I am a sinner saved by grace too. I'm both. I'm both. And he says, and I'm going to tell you what he don't understand. He says, you can't be both. He said, we've got to get out of this mentality of saying we're a sinner saved by grace. All these songs we've been singing for hundreds of years. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm just a sinner saved. All them songs have been wrong all this time. And now God has showed him that the only time you're a sinner is five seconds when you believe. You're a sinner when you come to the Lord and you believe. And five seconds, you're no longer a sinner. You're a child. We got to get out of that mentality. Yes, sir. I don't know. That's a good question. 
It ain't. It'd be a split second, really, if that was true. You don't stay a sinner for four more seconds. You know, because listen, it might feel like, well, I'm doing that because I don't truly right? I am who he says I am, right? Yeah, you hear that all the time. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. And what they're trying to convince themselves is, I'm not really what I am. I'm what he says I am. And the truth is, you're both. Judicially, the Lord sees you as a son of God, washed in the blood. Practically, we are still in this body of flesh. He does not understand the great doctrine because they no longer teach it in the, whatever they call them things, seminaries of state and standing. That's one of the greatest doctrines of a New Testament church, a Christian state and a Christian stand. You still have an old nature that is a sinner, saved by grace. You have a new nature who never sinned and is right in the sight of God. That's the, he just don't get it. I don't know if he, I don't know if he just don't know it. I choose to, I hope that's what it is. I hope you don't know it and deliberately deceiving them people. I'm assuming he just don't know it. He says good things about you. Really? He thinks good things about you. He feels good things about you. Is that right? Did he think good things about Ananias and Sapphira? He killed them. You see what I'm talking about? Now, <laughs> now who could argue with God wants good things? Of course God wants good things for us. But there's another side of the Christian life. It'll knock your brains out too if you choose to live wicked. Whatsoever a man soweth, Christian, that shall he also reap. He killed Ananias and Sapphira, y'all. I mean, I'm think good thoughts toward you. I just wonder, I want to prosper you. I want to, bam. No, that ain't right. That ain't right. Listen. He's a good father. He, he loves you. He is. Are you with me? Yes, so far. Old song, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. Like me. It's a great song. We sang it last week. But here's the part that we miss. Past tense. Saved a wretch. You're not a wretch anymore. Take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 7. And here is the problem. People don't study the Bible no more. You were a wretch. The second you got saved... You are no longer a wretch. The Apostle Paul wrestling with these two natures in Romans chapter 7 is one of the most tremendous chapters on the two natures in the entire Bible. The Apostle Paul said here in Romans chapter number 7, let's just look at it for a minute. Uh, Paul said the law is good. Uh, verse 12. Uh, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am, not was, am, present tense, he was saved, sold under sin. Now hold your finger there just a second before you read any more. Did you know there's a lot of Baptists that teach that all that stuff Paul was referring to pre-salvation experience? Because they say, no, sir, if, you, if you're saved, Jesus is Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. If he's not Lord of your life, you're not really saved. And they think if you're still sinning, sold under sin, you ain't saved. That's false doctrine, people. That's heresy. I know plenty of Christians sin. I've sinned. Ain't you sinned? Well, yes, you have. Look at here. Verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. He said, I catch myself doing stuff that I know ain't right. I allow it. For what I would, that do I not. I want to do right. I want to pray. I want to read my Bible. But what I hate, that, I, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent to the law that it, the law, is good. Now then it is no more I that do it. There's your spiritual man. But sin that dwelleth in me, there's your fleshly man. There's the old man. For I know, look at verse 18. I know that in me, that is in my flesh, present tense dwelleth no good thing. This fellow completely misses that. Why don't he say, now, in our flesh, there's no good thing, but in our spiritual nature, he could teach that and be fine. He's teaching half the gospel. Do you know why? Because it appeals to those soccer moms that's got nice little kids and pretty families and money. 
And that's what they grow them kind of churches off of. Soccer moms that's got money. Not snotty nose kids, not old people that's about to die. Not anybody you have to put time and effort in. I'm not trying to be ugly tonight. I'm just saying that the, the congregation is at a, watch, watch if they show uh, elevation or uh, Osteen or anything. If it shows them all jumping around the altar and jumping up and down, everybody in there is under, under 40. The mentality is there's where we're going. That's the group we're going after. Now let's read just a little bit more. For I know that in me dwells no good thing. Verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. He said, I make up my mind, I'm going to do good, and I don't do it. The evil which I would not, that I do. Listen, there ain't a saved person in here try to live right that don't get that verse right there. Buddy, I understand that perfectly. I've been to the altar and I said, God, I'll never do that again, and went right back out there and done the same thing. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes, you have. We have. More than once, God, I promise you I'll never do it again. And, and then somebody says, well, you didn't really repent because you did it again. And I don't believe that. If your heart's sincere and you sincerely turn from it, you repented. Look here. Verse number 20. Now, if I do that, I would not. It's no more I that do it. There's your, there's your spiritual man. But sin that dwelleth in me. There's your carnal man. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members. That's your hands, your feet, your body, your ears, your nose, your tongue, your lips. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my memory. Now hold your place there just a second. You're not trash. You are a son. You are a daughter. You are a child of God. If you have received this gift of salvation and you believe in Jesus, then the Bible says that you are adopted, grafted in. You are an heir. Do you know what an heir means? That is true. That is true. You are adopted. You are an heir. But he's saying you ain't a wretch no more. And you are. Look at verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. <laughs> Not was... Paul had been saved for a long time when he wrote this. Oh, wretched man that I am. He, listen, listen, y'all. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm trying to help you understand real pre Bible preaching from motivational talks. Do you know what air means? Yeah. It means a recipient of an inheritance. Hold on a second. I old song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. It's a great song. We sang it last week. But here's the part that we miss. Past tense. Saved a wretch. You're not a wretch anymore. There you are. According to verse 24, Paul was. Oh, wretched man that I was. Uh-uh. Paul didn't say, oh, wretched man that I was till I got saved. And now I'm just a child of God. He said, I'm a wretch right now. Right now. Right now. You reckon that guy in 1 Corinthians 15 that was committing fornication with his father's wife in the church, reckon God had good thoughts toward him? You know what the Lord said about him? Turn him over to Satan. There's your good thoughts. And if you feel something resisting this, that's the devil. I'm giving y'all the truth, y'all. I'm giving you balanced Bible truth, rightly divided. We are a child of God. We are joint heirs with Christ. Thank God we're going in. But your flesh ain't born again. When you get born again, you're born again of the Spirit. You don't. Your flesh don't get born again until the rapture. When the rapture comes, he shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like in his glorious body. Then we're going to get a body that don't never sin again. But until then, I tell you what you are. You're a good man living in a bad body. That's what you are. If you're saved, you're a good man. What do you think warfare is? What do you think this daily fight we have? Excuse me. Uh, now, y'all y'all go to this church. You know that, but uh, they get mad at me in a lot of places for saying that. You know, because he sounds cute. He's young. He's energetic. I'm old and energetic. <laughs> uh, but, but my words are like vinegar, brother. Amen. I mean, I give you the candy and then give you the vinegar. It's both. You're a, you're a carnal man and you're a spiritual man. You're not trash. You are a son. You are. 
I get it. We're not trying. I get it. I know people think I'm just a low down good for the night. Ain't no hope for me. You're not supposed to go around moping like that all the time. You are a child of God. But in your flesh, well, it's no good thing. You're still a wretch. Daughter, you are a child of God. If you have received this gift of salvation. He, he, he won't come out and say it, but he says it without saying it. Believe in Jesus, then the Bible says that you are adopted, grafted in. You are an heir. Do you know what an heir means? Do you know what an heir means? It means a recipient of an inheritance. I am a joint heir with Jesus. Then I have got to change my thinking. No, I have. No, we do not change our thinking. We are not going to leave off the idea that just because we're a joint heir with Christ, we're no longer a sinner saved by grace. You can't do that. That's heresy. And if you don't believe it, check me out at the judgment seat one day and see what the Lord said about it. It's what the book says. The book teaches you are present tense still right now a sinner saved by grace, born again. That which is born of God cannot sin. First John that which is born inside me ain't never sinned, born again. But this flesh dwelleth no good thing. And I just drag it around with me all the time, having a fight with it all the time. I just stop dragging myself through life saying, well, I'm just a sinner. I'm just a no for good. No, no, blah, 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 blah. Pretty good. That's a pretty good attitude to have. Instead of thinking you're hot stuff, walk around with your chest. Stuck out. That's why they do it. At Justin Bieber's church at Hillsong, they were like, we're great, we're great, we're great. You'd be better off to get down and say, we're just a sinner. You'd be a lot better off to stay humble, say, we are just a sinner. No, lift your head, because he says something way different. He looks at you and says, that's my child, that's my son, that's my daughter. Dusty, would you do me a favor going down and give me a Pepsi? <laughs> I ain't a Pepsi in that pulpit in a long time. When we apply stuff like... Saved a wretch like me, or sinner saved by grace. The, the issue comes in when that is still our current identity. When we walk around with that. When we say we're a sinner saved by grace or a wretch, that's still our current present tense identity. We're wrong, he says. Assuming them people didn't read what I just read you a minute ago. Paul didn't say I used to be a wretch, but that's no longer my identity. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. How am I ever going to get out of this mess? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You want to say something, brother? Thank you, brother. Don't tell nobody I do this. Yeah, I'm getting to that one. I'm getting to that one. He, he said, he put that one in the past. He did get, said that verse. because Some people bring that up. Paul said, I am chief of sinners. He said he meant he was. Now watch out for anybody who changes the scripture to teach what they want to teach. I've heard Dr. Ruckman say it a hundred times. He said the only way you can take, teach false doctrine is leave a word out that ain't in there or put a word that ain't in there in or take it out of its context. When you have to change the scripture to make it teach what you already believe ahead of time, you're, you're off base. You know what we do here at this church? Son, we let it say what it says if it higher lips our grandma. And you ought to appreciate that. If Brother Danny said I, something and the Bible says something else, throw what I said out the window and take what this book said. Yea, let God be true and every man a liar. That's the only right we even have to exist. Preacher ain't the final authority. The Bible's the final authority. I guarantee you, this, the girl that sent me this used to come to youth camp and she sent me this and said, Brother Danny, listen to this. Something ain't right. You know, she'd been taught. She'd been taught. But then people sitting there ain't been taught. They eat that up like black strap molasses. <laughs> my old preacher said, old preachers used to say that. I don't, even, I don't even know what black strap molasses is. My daddy used to eat molasses. But anyway, nothing like a good Budweiser in the pool. Babe. That'll be next probably. As our identity. Okay? And so look at me. That should lead us out of this thinking and mentality that we are just a wretch. That we are. It's got to lead us out of this thinking that we're a wretch. We got no, no. You don't think like that no more. Don't think you're a wretch. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to make him people feel better about yourself. That's okay. But they ain't, they ain't no use kidding yourself, buddy. You're a wretch. I'm a wretch. 
And if you be honest with me here tonight, every one of y'all knows you're a wretch. Would you want your deepest, darkest thoughts put up here on this screen just from the past week and a half? Don't every time you think you're really living right, some of the most ungodly, wicked thoughts, you think, where in the world that come from? Bam, ungodliness. You're a wretch. You're a wretch saved by grace. Trash. That we are just a sinner. Hey, I'm saved by grace. Praise God, I'm going to heaven one day. But until then, no, no, you are a child of God. That's true. You see how you don't get it? State standing. You're standing in Christ. You're a child of God. Judicially, when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. We can shout on that. Jump up and down and shout. Practically speaking, he knows every hair on your head and knows your thoughts. He knows exactly. He don't see you as perfect. He, he, you, you're both. You're a servant. You're a son. He thinks you got to be one or the other. I'll let you hear him say it here in a second. Value. And he looks at you. Man, he loves what he sees. Mm, it's debatable. I tell you what he loves to see is Christ Jesus' blood on our lives and his son's life on us. That's what he loves to see. He didn't love to see the guy in fornication in 1 Corinthians 5. He didn't love to see. He didn't love what he sees. Mm -mm. Amen? Nope. Are you with me? Nope. You ain't. Not there. As long as we continue to drag ourselves we're with you where you're right or with the Bible where you're wrong. And the same thing true about anybody. Me, the Pope, uh, the it's all right to go down the right road any distance with anybody. It's wrong to go down the wrong road any distance with anybody. Amen. Politician, athlete, entertainer, if we're the right, we're for them. We're the wrong, we're against them. That's what a Bible believer is. Okay? Life with a mentality that we are dirty, rotten scoundrels, that we are good for nothing screw ups. How can we truly live in victory? Because you live in victory through the Lord in your spiritual life. That's how. I am a scoundrel. I know me. I'm embarrassed. Listen, I don't even deserve to stand up here. If I knew how wicked y'all was, I'd probably grab my stuff and run out of here. Listen, there ain't nothing good about us except Jesus and then. You, you know, you got to get that. He, he, he don't see the difference between your, your flesh and your spirit. And how can we receive what Holy Spirit is declaring to us? So are we sinners or sons? Are we sinners or daughters? You're both. you both. It don't have to be one or the other. He said, are we sinners or are we sons? You ain't a sinner no more since you got saved. You're a son. No, you're a saved sinner and you are a son of God in your spiritual man. Now, does anybody have a problem understanding that? That's a doctrine of state and standing. Sinners or children of God. Well, let's look at Galatians 3.26. In Christ Jesus. First John chapter 3, not on the screen, but it says, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we... I ain't arguing with that. It's great love. ...be called children of God. Amen. And then John the Beloved goes on in that verse to say, Beloved... Now we are children of God. Now we are children of God. That's true. Are you getting it? Are you listening to it? Guess what else is true? Now we're still sinners. That first John he's quoting out of says, if we say we have no sin, we, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. He's preaching half of a doctrine and what he's saying is right. But it leaves off the other half, makes them heretic. Because those people are going to leave there thinking, I'm not as bad as I thought I was. Just enjoy it, man. Enjoy being saved. Kidding herself. We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Not when we get to heaven one day. Now we are children of God. Now you are a child of God. Flesh ain't been born again, and your flesh is still wicked as it ever has been. You are capable. You are capable right now, tonight, of committing any sin you committed before you got saved, or, excuse me, or any other sin. You're capable of it in your flesh. Amen. Amen. That's good news. And I have an awesome and really theological answer for it, but I'm going to do it with a question. How many of you have seen Toy Story 4? 
Okay, raise your hand if you have not seen Toy Story 4. Woo! All right, all right. Listen, even if I didn't have three young children, I would be first in line. And that is an awesome movie, y'all. You gotta see it. So don't worry, what I'm about... I mean, I'm, I don't mean to be ugly, y'all. What if I got up here and bragged on movies and said I was going to be the first in line to them? You never, you've never heard me say I went to a Hollywood movie. You ain't never heard me say that. I don't think a preacher should. I don't think there's anything come out of Hollywood fit to watch. I don't know what Toy Story 4 is about. I don't know what Toy Story 3 is about or 2. But he said he got this message from there's a, a character in there like a spoon or a fork or something. Does anybody know what that is? Your kids want, uh, well, uh, I can come out after my kids is grown, I guess. I don't know when it was, but he said the fork went around thinking I'm terrible. I'm trice. I'm good for nothing. And he built that whole sermon off of that. He said, I'd be the first in line to see Toy Story 4. Now, Toy Story 4 probably is clean and it probably has no wickedness in it or anything. But the problem is the preacher goes to the movies and everybody sees him there, they're going to say, well, I'll just go next week. He, he don't know what they're watching. I'm not saying you're a dog if you do. I'm just saying that's my personal feelings about it. Um, anything I want to see, like that movie they had on abortion that came out, I really wanted to see that. And Carrie tried to get me to go. And I said, I said it'll come out on video and I'll get to see it. And I still ain't seen it. But um, it, it's, I mean, the, the man of God. It's not a spoiler. You're not going to like it. Decorates for, uh, Forky, I almost called him Sporky, but decorates Forky, just crafts him, puts eyes on him and a face on him and little feet. And, and then all of a sudden, Forky is no longer just some plastic throwaway fork. Forky is her prized possession. And the whole movie, the whole movie is about this fork. And we can't get past our failures, our mistakes. We can't get past our Oh, I've been struggling with this. So, man, I'm just, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. And I want us to change that mentality. Hear that? What does change that mentality mean? Don't think that no more. That's exactly what it means without saying it. He don't come out and say, you ain't a sinner no more. Said, we have to change that mentality. See how slick that is? That's politician talk, y'all. Or you say it without saying it. Hey, are you with me? Like how awesome. Like I, I was sitting in this movie and then this is unfolding before my eyes and I'm like, oh Jesus. Like, the movie's preaching. So say it again. Say, I am not trash. You're not trash. I love this quote. Listen to this. I am not a sinner who struggles with loving God. I'm a lover of God who struggles with sin. I'm primarily a lover of God, not a sinner. You're primarily a lover of God. That's who you are. That's your identity. A child of God, a son and daughter of the Most High, who is good and a loving father. When he looks at you, he has good thoughts. Good. That depends, ladies and gentlemen. When he looks at you judicially, he sees you as perfect and the blood of Jesus Christ over you. When he looks at you practically as a man in this flesh, he ain't always having good thoughts. He'll knock your brains out. He says, if you live out to the flesh, you shall die. Paul said, I'm a chief of sinners. Thoughts. Good thoughts. And again, when we catch that and we realize it and we walk that out, then we are going to more and more disassociate with, oh, I'm just a sinner. And we're going to disassociate. So if they come to our church and say, man, we're just sinners saved by grace, they'd say, oh, these poor ignorant people. They don't realize that they're not a sinner. They're a son. Because that's what this message teaches. And live in, no, I'm a child of God. I'm a son. You're a daughter. Like, we are children of God. He thinks of you. Amen? Maturity, we have to move away from this constant sin consciousness and associating with our failure and our past because the past is the past. Amen? That's true.
The past is the past. But what he's saying is we have to get over this mentality of we're still sinners. That's what he's talking about. And the more we obsess over our mistakes and what we perceive as flaws and our, man, it's like we can't, we try to move forward. And maybe on a Sunday morning. You're describing Paul perfect. I do that which I would not. I consent to the law of the good. There's no more I that do it. That do it. He's obsessing with not being able to live perfect. That's exactly what he's doing. Glimpse of who we are and what we were made to be. but And know who we are and whose we are. All right, what about Paul's letter to Timothy where he said that he is the chief of sinners? So in context, Paul is referring to Jesus coming to save sinners. Here we go. Here's how the slick educator twists the Bible. In the context, Paul was talking about Jesus coming to save sinners. And he knew his own former life was primarily former life persecuting, threatening, and hating Christ followers. So Paul is saying, hey, if anyone is messed up, I'm the chief. But he wasn't saying, that's currently who I am. He sure did say it's who I am. Do you know what he said? He said, he said, that's not currently who I am. He sure did say I am. Taking, assuming them people don't read that. Chief of sinners. No. Yes. We have to, again, that, that's just one example of many. How religion has given us a bad representation of who God is and who we are. Religion has given us a bad representation of who God is and who we are. Religion didn't give us that. The Bible did. That came out of the Bible. Paul said, I'm a chief of sin. That got nothing to do with religion. Got nothing to do with religion. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, stop right there tonight, and I'm going to read you off some scriptures, and then we'll take, we'll take just a minute. we only got a couple of minutes here. We'll, we'll be done. Your standing is settled. Your state is variable. Your standing is fixed. When you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, your standing eternally is fixed. Your name's written down. The devil can't race it out. Your state is variable because we have two natures. Paul said in Romans 7, 14, 25, is a spiritual war. Your body is the problem. It ain't been born again. You can still have the most wicked thoughts, desires, imaginable. What is born of God, the Son, cannot sin. 1 John 3, 9. But in 1 John 1, 8, the same book, it said if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. That's your flesh. Did God just think good thoughts about Ananias and Sapphira? Absolutely not. In Galatians 6 and verse 7, he said, Whatsoever a man, a saved man, a child of God, sows, that shall he also reap. Colossians 3.25 said, He, Christians, that doeth wrong, shall receive for the wrong that he's done. It gets you for it. God don't see our sins judicially. He knows the thoughts of your thoughts and hairs on your head practically. You are both a servant and a son. You know, and when he looks at us, he loves what he sees. Judicially, yes. Practically, that's a different ball game. All right. Now, there's a great study here that I'll give you if you'll take all these scriptures on state and standing. Your standing is your judicial legal. If you got a kid, you know exactly what that means. If you got a kid. My girls... I'd take them somewhere, and let's just say, uh, let's just I'll make something up. Let's say I was taking them to to, to a, a theme park at Disney World or somewhere, and and on the way there, they got in a fight, you know, in a fuss and everything. And I said, all right, y'all, I'm telling you, you better hush right now. Uh, you're not, you're not, now my mind's made up. I'm still going to take them to Disney World. I may have to stop and discipline them. I may have to stop and deal with them. Judicially, my mind made up. I see the, the end. I'm going to take them to Disney World. No matter what. But if they fuss and fight, we may have to stop along the way and deal with it. Now that's the way God sees you. He's going to get you to heaven, brother, one way or the other. High peace bouncing off the planets, ricocheting. Bang, 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 bang. You're going, you're going up when he comes at you. But along the way, he may have to smack you around a little bit. His thoughts of getting you to heaven are fixed. But he's practically daily thoughts. All right. Give me your give me a question. We'll take 
Good night. Our time's gone. Anybody have a question or a comment? Right quick. Make one quick comment. Uh, what I think he's doing is teaching a hierarchy. And people look at the hierarchy and they go, well, that's not right. But he's saying, I'm Equalized. We are sinners saved by grace. Amen. And we are equal. And in school, when I would have a kid picking on another, I'd say, you know what that is? I said, they're in chicken. That's what chickens do. The pecking order That's right. comes from chicken. That's right. And what they do, and I learned this in poultry science, but, and I think that guy was a great Christian. Yeah. He never said it, but buddy, he taught me a lot. Amen. And he said, what happens is one chicken, they'll get him over the corner, they'll peck him and peck him and peck him until he gets it. Then they'll get the next one, peck him and peck him and peck him until he kills him. So what they do to them chickens, they cut their beaks off. Yeah. And uh, chickens, uh, in captivity, chickens got lips. They cut their beaks off so that they can't do that. And I said, I basically told them, look, is that all you are? You don't have no more the mentality of a chicken. That all you want to do is create a pecking order. Yeah. You want to create this hierarchy. And in, when you look at Christianity, I mean, that's the Roman Catholic Church. Most churches, they want to create this hierarchy, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's trying to create this hierarchy. I am I am better than you because I'm a Christian, and no we ain't. Now listen, y'all put that, what I just played you, and then play a sermon tomorrow on your on your YouTube by Joe Arthur. What's the difference? The difference between authoritative Bible preaching and motivational speakers is a world of difference. But we got a whole generation that's fed on that milk sop diet. And it's just, it's. Just, I mean, I'm not saying they're not saved. When you hear people talk like that right there, even what he's saying is right. The tone, the, the whole spirit. If he that cometh preaches another Jesus, you receive another spirit. A preaching is supposed to be authoritative. Thus saith the Lord. And that ain't too popular nowadays. That's why I have in small groups. Somebody needs to get up in a small group and say, look, let's get the devil out of us. That's right. Every small group. I'm not against small groups. We, if you have them here, that's fine. But I'm just saying... Well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? Okay, man stands up and says, here's what God said. That's what you need. That's what preaching is. Anybody else right quick? So a lot of, a lot of, you can tell by the music. You can tell by that music. When that music goes wrong and then it get on the wrong Bible, there goes the preaching. That music identifies it. All right, let's, let's go ahead and pray and uh, hope everybody will take this and study. We're going to get in some more stuff. Uh, I'm going to get one Sunday night that you're going to be surprised over. I'm going to preach something. I don't even know if it's right, but I'm going to preach it anyway. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding with you. I, I, that's right. All of a sudden, we're not sinners. After all these years, we're not a sinner saved by grace. After all these years, you better watch that kind of, Spirit. You sure can. Nail on the head, brother. That's a nail on the head. It's kind of, It sounds like a psychologist. And you hear more and more of that in it. Coping and sharing and less scripture. Don't. I'm not jealous because I'm uneducated. I'm not. Thank God I'm not. It might have ruined me. But you, you, you got to you be careful who you listen to. Put some old-fashioned preaching on you. Put that Ralph Sexton, Billy Kelly, Mays Jackson, Joe Arthur, and, and all them boys on there, and, and they'll, they'll help you. I listened to a sermon the other day by Joe Arthur. I forgot the name of it, and I let, let Kelly listen to it. She said, man, that was good. I got on the MP3. You can listen to it, put it in your car, and listen to one right after another. All right, let's stand. We'll be dismissed. Don't forget visitation Saturday. Y'all pray for me. I got to drive to Virginia tomorrow, and I really, I don't know, I'll just I'll leave the wind today on <laughs> Uh, uh, y'all pray for me seriously all right let's bow our heads in prayer and we'll be dismissed and uh, uh, we'll, we'll go Mike just go ahead Father thank you so much for your love grace and mercy Lord we thank you Father we are sinners saved by your great grace Lord and we love you we love you because you first loved us Lord and I pray Lord that you be with our pastor Lord as he goes to uh, Virginia tomorrow uh, I pray that you 